On Wednesday, history will be made by Hawthorne's Space Exploration Incorporated as it becomes the first private company to launch people into space. Astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley will be on top of a Falcon 9 rocket for a trip to the International Space Station, where the Crew Dragon capsule will stay and guide them to their return months later. Joining us from Seattle is Casey Dreyer, who is the Space Policy Advisor for Pasadena-based Planetary Society. So, Mr. Dreyer, characterize the importance of this mission. This is the payoff of a gamble that NASA took almost 10 years ago by deciding to partner with private companies to return human access to low Earth orbit by the United States and to have access to the space station. Nothing like this has ever really been attempted before, where NASA has stepped back from its direct oversight of these programs and turned a lot of responsibility over to private companies like SpaceX and Boeing. So this will be a huge test of that idea, and if they pull it off, it fundamentally changes the relationship for how humans go into space, where it's not just a government endeavor, it's a private endeavor and a partnership between the two of them. What is Washington going to be looking for? Is this going to actually work? The idea was that not only would we turn over some responsibility to private industry, but the payoff to the taxpayer was that it would save money. And so far, that seems to be true. Uh, NASA has spent a fraction of the amount that it has classically spent on developing new human-capable spacecraft. But the real key is, is it safe and reliable? So we can save the money, but the payoff has to be that astronauts can get to the space station safely, they can come back, and then we can start moving towards this new idea of can we push further and farther out where NASA has turned over access to the low Earth orbit to private industry. They can buy seats, just like we would buy a ticket on a Greyhound bus or an airplane, and NASA can work on the hard stuff of sending people to the moon, Mars, and beyond. This is happening in the middle of a global pandemic. Has that had any, had any impact on this mission? The preparations have been, it's one of NASA's highest priorities. They've taken it really seriously. They've been quarantining and isolating the astronauts longer than usual. You saw NASA practice very good social distancing. When the astronauts arrived at the Cape before launch, the NASA administrator was there and stayed you know, more than six feet apart from the astronauts instead of giving them the, the classic handshake. Everyone was wearing masks. So NASA's taking this very seriously. You do not want to see a COVID breakout on the space station. So far, everything seems fine. And, you know, again, these are rocket launch pads. You don't want to get too close to each other anyway, so there's plenty of room to stay distant. What will you be looking for? Well, I'm going to be looking for a safe flight, first of all. I want to see the astronauts launch on time. I want to see no problems going up into space. They have about a day, a little less than 24 hours before they reach the space station. That'll be the next big test is when you, you know, dock the two spacecraft together. And after that, we're, the next big thing is that they need to come home safely. So they'll stay on the space station for one to four months. It's not quite sure yet. The, you know, and then they'll come back. They have to test the parachutes. They land in the water, they come out safely. So I'll be holding my breath until Bob and Doug are back on land and everything looks good. And then I'll look forward to the next launch. Casey Dreyer of the Planetary Society, thank you for taking the time. Oh, thank you. Happy to be here. Up next, columnist Chris Erskine says goodbye to the Los Angeles Times when we return.